Hi, every week I'm trying to do uh, an update on information that's provided to me via the uh, CIPD, that's the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development. Now, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to address here in this one. First, uh, they've just issued a guidance document on returning to work. Now, as we've said more than once in these videos, the government has hardly been forthcoming in terms of a return to normality strategy, an exit strategy from the coronavirus situation. And it leaves us to, to make our own strategies. And one of the important things is that we prepare for that. Now, in the more recent videos that I've made, we've covered a, a lot of that. And a lot of that is also covered in the guidance document from the CIPD. One of the important things that is covered in that particular document is the issue, when you're looking at getting people back into work, you can look at options in terms of, uh, does everyone have to be back at, at the same time? Um, and we've discussed how we can continue to look at, at things like uh, more flexible working, some people working from home, some people going back into the actual work workplace. We can look at those kinds of things and it's important that we do, but if our considerations are first and foremost the health, safety and well-being of our, our employees, then we're off to a good start on that. If we start thinking along those lines, then that is one of the most important things we can do. So, for example, a case study that was submitted to the CIPD quite recently by a brewery and distillery based in Scotland was that they were, of course, continuing production. Uh, although the pubs they were supplying uh, were not going to be opening, they, then they're still going to have a drink that they can produce for off sales. And so they uh, made sure that there were barriers between workstations in, in the workshops. So that made it that whether people wanted to or not, they could not uh, do other than social distance when they were at the workstation. So thinking along those lines, how do you keep people two metres apart when you get back into work? How do you maintain the flexibility of work? And also, as I discussed in the most recent uh, video uh, from earlier this week, one of the things that we may have to start considering is whether or not we are going to be looking at downsizing our operations, downsizing at our uh, staffing levels, or whether we can reduce levels of work. Now, the present uh, employee retention scheme finishes on uh, at the end of June. And there are no guarantees that that will be continued or extended beyond that date. Should it be that we are not back in work, then, uh, then we're going to have to start considering either layoffs or continuing on that scheme, but the finance is coming from the employer's pocket. Now, that not might be, that might not be uh, a possibility for a lot of smaller employers for whom these videos are really di directed. So these things are going to have to be considered, but as I say, the first and foremost thought has got to be health, safety and well-being of employees. The guidance also covers to some extent another issue that we've talked about, and that's the emotional and psychological areas uh, that uh, where, where there's an impact upon people who have been furloughed, the distress that's caused, the uncertainty, and working in isolation, that the, these are problems that the employer should address. If you have access to uh, an occupational health provider, then it's worth consulting with those uh, advisors uh, about these issues. And when it comes to bringing people back to work, uh, it's important that we have uh, things uh, such as maybe one-to-ones with managers when people return. A lot of people are going to feel uncomfortable uncomfortable about returning until they're sure, absolutely sure that things are safe. So when the government does start to uh, bring about what is in all likelihood is going to be a phased return to work, then it's important that 
we consult very much with our employees to see how they can come back to work, whether they feel safe and uh, in, in doing so, and how we can organise the work anyway. Now, I said uh, last week, I, I started doing some things on frequently asked questions. And today I want to deal with some frequently asked questions around self-employment. Now, this is going to impact on a lot of the smaller uh, enterprises that this that this uh, series of videos is directed to. Now, I'm going to keep glancing over to my left to look at these questions. So when I'm reading the questions, uh, I'm, I'm not being ignorant. I'm, I'm just making sure that I've got the questions right and the answers uh, are correct from that. So the first question that I want to address is, what assistance is available for self-employed people? Well, the government has announced help for self-employed people and they announced on the, on the 26th of March that self-employed people can claim a taxable income support worth 80% of their average monthly income. But the income is calculated on the average over the last three years. And there's eligibility criteria for that, which includes they must have submitted a tax return for the 2018-2019 period. The self-employed person must have trading profits in that year of under £50,000. So that means that if you're earning more than £50,000, you do not qualify for this. Um, and the self-employed person must take uh, more than half of their income from self-employment. So for instance, um, you know, a lot of people may work full-time or part-time in a job and work self-employed in other areas. Employees who work for an employer but have some separate self-employed work on the side, which is less than half their income, will not be eligible. So there are some criteria that must be met there. I hope that's clear, but if anyone has any queries, they can get in touch with me using the usual contact details to go with these videos. Right, now, can a self-employed person work for us? That's if you're the employer, so I'm talking to you as an employer now. Work for us over the March-June period and still claim under the coronavirus self-employment income support scheme. Well, the simple answer to that is yes, they can claim uh, under that. But as usual, you would expect uh, that uh, there are some criteria that must be met on that. So the eligibility for self-employment income support depends upon the individual's income being under £50,000. So that is a, a thread that runs through all of these. Will payments under the coronavirus self-employment income support scheme be made? Well, self-employed people do not have to initiate uh, the application. It's understood the HMRC will contact them with instructions. So uh, the ball is very much in HMRC's call on that. <clears throat> what happens to people who work for us? Again, I go back to uh, the employer coming from, uh, the, the question coming from employers who employ self-employed people. What happens to people who work for us but uh, only became self-employed in the two 2019 to 20 tax year. Well, those people who first became self-employed in that tax year and do not therefore have a full year of accounts will not be able to claim under the scheme. So a lot of people that have only recently become self-employed will unfortunately for them not be able to access this scheme. I'm going to ask one final question on this. Do self-employed people ha have to be self-employed for three years to claim under the coronavirus self-employment income support scheme? Well, that comes from an earlier uh, answer. And uh, no, they don't have to have traded for three years, uh, but they do have to have traded in the tax year 19 to 2020 be trading when the application is made or would be trading except for the pandemic and intend to continue trading in 2020-21. So there's quite a few questions uh, uh, that we've been able to address. And as usual, I'm saying that any queries, any questions to do with the coronavirus situation, we're all in this together 
and I will answer anything, anything at all around this uh, subject, uh, absolutely free of charge. Um, and, and things like the guidance document I will provide to customers, and I've explained this in a previous vi video, that I will provide a service level agreement uh, of zero cost to you to make it that you are bona fide customers, but I'm not charging you. Uh, so I don't want to get into trouble with the CIPD for giving away their stuff uh, to people that are not my customers. Okay, well, thank you for listening. Uh, please, uh, uh, if you like these videos, if they're of, of use to you, please uh, pr press the, the button to subscribe on the YouTube video. Uh, if you receive these via Facebook, uh, please uh, press the button for like and share if possible. Uh, and, um, and then I hope to speak to you soon. I'll be doing these videos at least uh, two a week. So I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.